G'day guys and welcome back to another video in this desert preparation series on the KDM 690 Enduro R. In that last video we replaced the rocker arms, we also put a new battery on there, a pretty serious job but it went really well so I'm happy with that. So what are we going to do in this video? Well first we're going to get that air filter off, we're going to give it a good clean. Second we're going to drop that dirty oil out and top it up with some fresh stuff and also a couple of new uh, oil filters. And then last we're going to see if we can cut that dirty rusty chain off and put a nice new one on there. So it's three jobs that shouldn't take that long. Let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is get that dirty air filter off. As you would have seen in the last uh, video, cut a quarter turn little bolts there, and uh, off she comes. Let's go and have a look at it. All right, guys, we might as well get stuck into the first thing on that list, and that is the cleaning of the 690s air filter. Now, there's a thousand different ways and a thousand different cleaning solutions online that you can get. You can spend up big, or you can, you know, research all different types of ways to do it. Uh, and then at the end of the day, you just got to do what works for you. So for me, I use mineral terps uh, as my first, you know, good rinse for the, the air filter. And then I follow it up with maybe a couple of decent ones with just simple morning fresh dishwashing liquid. I pinch this from the missus under the sink, so she's going to be happy with that. So, and that's it. So all you need is a decent bucket. Um, I use, yeah, some disposable gloves if you don't try and keep your hands reasonably clean. Um, some paper towel and or rags. And that's about it. So at the end of the day, you just do what works for you, really. All right, so this is uh, the 690s air filter. That's that Rock Wheeler product from the USA. It's really a decent product. It's quite expensive, but it seems to work really well. I'm happy with it. So no real complaints. And you can see in there, um, yeah, some discoloration, some mud and dirt or dust and dirt that's gathered in, in some of the oil spots. Just remembering this uh, air filter did have a filter skin uh, on it for most of this that last trip I did so it's not probably indicative of a true uh, air filter but if you flip it over there you can see how nice and clean it is on the inside so it just shows you it's uh, doing its job. So whilst I'm uh, at it and getting the hands dirty and cleaning that air filter I might as well jump on and clean the 690 air filters oh sorry not the 690 the 500 EXC and here's one that did a weekend ride down at Canberra um, yeah did did a lot of single trail and a bit of open fire trail and so you can see how dusty and dirty and, and gunky and grimy it is. So it's on the outside but if you flip it over you can see how nice and clean and uh, fresh it is on the inside. So it's, it's, good, it's a good sign. It just shows you how efficient these air filters do their job and uh, it just shows you all that and nice and clean and staying out of your engine. So happy days there. All right, so I've got to get that third air filter out of the 500 EC and then we'll get our hands dirty. So of course the air filter's on the other side of the bike, um, so I might just give it a bit of a drag around, there we go, make sure it's not hitting anything, and uh, I'll be able to get down there and pop that out. Oh, air filter cover off, slide that in there. And, um, I've got a little product that I like to use, and that's uh, one of these. Once you, when you get an air filter out, you can whack one of these on, um, what do you call them? I don't know, an air filter cover. So yeah, so you can just simply take your air filter out and put that on, and it just keeps it clean. Good for when you're cleaning your bike. Uh, this air filter's not too bad. I'll just whack this in. There we go. All right, I'll bring you over for a look and I'll show you that in there quickly anyway. I know we're not doing 500 EXEs, we're doing 690s, but I'll give you a squeeze. Okay, so you can see that uh, air filter cover or protectional cover, whatever you call it, situated in there. Um, yeah, so I could pretty much um, now get in there, wipe around, clean around, spray, and uh, everything that's in there is going to be nice and protected. It's held on by that little race there, so cool. Now this particular air filter hasn't done a lot of work. You can still see the bluey tinge of the oil that's been sprayed on there. Um, this also has that little uh, locating cage or extra filter on the back that I need to take off and we'll give that a clean as well. 
So. So I had to change buckets. The bucket I had was round. It didn't quite fit uh, this one in. Does the uh, the 500 XZ filters perfectly, but with a longer rectangular shape um, air filter, I'll go with um, a rectangular shape bucket. So probably dump about I don't know a litre or so in there. Probably don't need that much. But it's just a matter of just submerging this, get it nice and nice and wet. And giving it a good clean. This filter, I'll bring you in for a closer look, is a pain in the ass because the cage, the race that it's got on the back in there, I can't take off. So it's hard to give it that um, that ringing kind of feel. I've got to kind of strain it out like that. You can see, I'll get it all nice and nice and wet. Hold it up, and you'll see how dirty the the Terps is coming off it now. It cleans it anyway, the Terps really gives it a good clean. That's one. Let's get this real dirty one in here. Already the gloves are, are split, so they're doing jack. They're off. Looks like I'm just going to get the hands dirty. Now with oil filters, sorry, air filters, you can't wring them out because you might tear it or some something similar. So you just got to give them a squeeze. You know, try and you can already see how much cleaner. Um, this one is, you know, you start to read the, the writing on there. So here we have the four oil filters. They've had two rinses through the mineral terps. Yeah, and they've come up pretty good. You can see that's um, nice and clean and hopefully there's no uh, real dirt in that. So now uh, we'll get into, you can see a little bit of discoloration in that from the, um, uh, the years of use. This one's turned up pretty good, but they're not finished yet. Also, the cage out of the back there was done. Not finished yet. Now we'll um, let them sit there for a bit, and then we'll give it a um, a good couple, two or three uh, rinses with the um, dishwashing liquid. All right, the bucket now is full with the morning fresh dishwashing liquid. It's just um, cold water. It's not warm or hot, so we'll put the uh, air filters back through this now. I guess I'm just massaging the foam. So already I can see the water coming off this one. It isn't too discolored, it's not brown. You can see there. So I'm pretty happy with that. We'll put that down, let it dry a bit, and then we'll do it another rinse. filters uh, nice and clean they've had two rinses in the terps and then a couple in the dishwashing liquid so I'll let them dry out for a bit and then I'll assess them in the morning and see if they need another rinse in the dishwashing liquid or if they're good to go so it's been a few days a number of days now and all these air filters are dry and clean and our main concern is the one that's going to go on the uh, 690 and it's uh, good to go so that job is done We'll now get on to getting that uh, rusty chain off the bike. So here's our uh, rusty old chain. It's um, been on the bike since new, I believe, so it's done enough work. And uh, we'll get that chain off. I'm gonna cut it with the grinder, take off that cover, and we'll inspect the, the front sprocket and we'll give the rear one a, a bit of an inspection and a quick clean and get the new one on. Let's cut it off. Now that I'm going to use the old angle grinder to cut this chain off, I guess I need hearing protection and eye protection. So let's get that on. So 
so there we go. The one mil blade on the angle grinder makes uh, mince meat of that. Let's just pull this chain out. This one's in the bin. We'll come in for a closer look and we'll have a look. Just a quick look on the uh, rear sprocket and there's hardly anywhere on that. Uh, the teeth all look like they're um, in really good condition. So I'm not gonna worry about that one. Give it a clean. Let's have a look at the front. So now we're just gonna remove the cover here on that front sprocket. An eight mil socket for these bolts. can't get them mixed up. So having a look at that, there is a little bit of wear on that sprocket. However, I don't believe it's enough to warrant getting a new one at this stage. There's still a bit of life in that. So I'm gonna give that a clean, clean everything up, and then we'll uh, look at getting that chain on. I guess this is why you do uh, periodic maintenance on your bike. Whilst inspecting that um, front sprocket, I've noticed a few things, so I'll bring you in for a look felt that and she's a bit wobbly and loose so I've got to give this some attention now. Alright so I've uh, had a good look at this uh, gear lever now and the bolt that's holding it. Now just remembering on my last desert adventure that bolt came out and I lost that and lucky enough I lost it close enough to a uh, service station at Copley and the old mate there in the workshop jimmied up this little bolt device here and put a couple of washers on there for me which was which was fantastic and got me out of trouble. However now it needs it something a little bit more permanent and a bit better. So you can see um, on the inner side of the gear, the gear lever here, the, the bolt and washer needs to be pushing on that inner face in there. And if it's not pushing on that, this will then come loose. And that's how. Now I've looked through all my supplies. Yep, I've got plenty of bolts and uh, they're going to do the trick. Same thread. However, I don't have anything uh, washer size that's going to fit inside the gear lever and apply the pressure on this to push it on the spline. So I might have to nip up to me old man's um, just up the road, get on the lathe and uh, turn up a quick one. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, I've quickly nipped up to my old man's uh, garage and he's got a lathe in here. So here's my dad, say hello. Hi guys, I'm the old man. That's <laughs> Kev. And uh, you know, we've got the lathe, we'll get that ready now and uh, we'll start machining up a quick washer. I probably could go and buy one at a hardware store or try and get one, but it's more fun. And uh, at least I know that this will be spot on. Cool. Yeah, good. Okay, I found myself a little bit of scrap aluminum, and uh, all I need to do is make sure that the OD of this is greater than the ID of that, which it is only just. So all I need to do is just machine this down a little bit so it fits inside that. We'll uh, face it off. I'll put a six or a quarter inch drill through there so it fits the bolt, and um, then I'll part it off the thickness I want. And that's it, so that's handy, all right? She's probably going a little bit slow for aluminum, but um, I don't have time. Couldn't be bothered just uh, pulling apart all the gears there. So I'm just taking the face of it off. There we go. Probably not needed the centering drill, but it um, doesn't hurt if you drill sharp enough and uh, ground properly, you probably won't need it. So all I need now is a hole through the centre of that to cover um, six mil, so that should be a quarter inch. And you can see that drill hasn't moved because of the centering. I only have to drill through enough for the parting tool to get the piece off. So yeah, 10 mil is probably plenty. And that'll do us. Now we'll uh, machine 
clean the OD. Take a quick look at the measurement here, which is in thou with these micro this dial micrometer, which is 720 thou. There we go, that looks like it's 800 thou. I need to bring 80 thou. Should do a there we go, a couple of foul clearance, a bit more. Spin that around. And now we'll part her off. Now we'll probably go for a thickness of um, at least that. Plus a few more foul. What do you reckon that'll do us? And we just put that on there, we just move the tool over to that, and then we know. That's our thickness. Done. Little spider's going to go for a ride. You can see by the, sh the shading it's producing, it's not that clean. So definitely the speed's not 100% right. And all the and all the positioning of the tool, but for this quick job, it's got to work. And now we need this deburring tool. Take the edge off there. We got a file. No file, just here. In the first drawer. First drawer. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Take the edge off there. Take the back edge off. And then we'll continue on with a part. We've got a very small drill. We put it in there and we capture our part. And there we have it. I'll get rid of that burr there. Um, it's a bit warm and uh, that'll be our little spacer in there. All right, I'll clean it up and I'll show you. Okay, so that's our little spacer made. And I'll bring you over here for a closer look. So here's our gear lever and the recess it's going to be in. And our space is just going to sit in there nicely like so. And the nut will sit on top. So I hope you can see that. So look here. Looks like it. Yeah, so, yeah, not bad. Can't do it without a lathe, so yeah. thanks, Dad. No worries, son. Good job. It's always handy to get up here and uh, work on his uh, tools and use his material. That's always good as well. <laughs> so. And my electricity. <laughs> We're back in the garage and we're ready to put that gear lever back on. We've got the a new bolt, a new machine spacer, and uh, the gear lever's ready to go. So I've given the spline a good clean. I've given the internal spline in here a good clean and a blowout. Got the Loctite 243. So we'll get that on now. I um I've also checked the video to have a look at the position. I don't want it to be too low or too high. So I know exactly the position it needs to be in. I'll give that a little hit just to make sure it's, it's pushed on that nice and firm, which it is. Let's get the bolt in there now. There we go, nice and tight. So there we have it, that is the new bolt and the washer that I've uh, turned up. And uh, that is pushing on this face here, or the, that internal face on that, pushing it against the spline. So that's gonna do the job. All right, so this is the chain I'm gonna put on the bike. It's just a standard RHK O-ring race chain gold, um, heavy duty chain. Uh, for off-road bikes, nothing special. It's not one of the super duper ones. Um, so we'll get this out and have a look and then we'll put it on the bike and, and see how we are for length. There's the, uh, the attachment there for the link on the chain. All right, that's it, looks good, nice and gold. 
let's get it on the bike. We've got the chain, it's ready to go onto the bike. The chain is already greased up and ready to go on from the manufacturer. Uh, the front sprocket I have in neutral, so it's nice and easy. So let's turn that on, get that on. Just wind it on, get that up and over there. Just making sure it's feeding along. It's a bit tricky with the guard still on, but you can manage. Just got to keep it up. There we go. Around that front sprocket. We can check it for length. Beauty. So the chain is on both front and rear sprocket. There's um, good tension there. I've got to get rid of the additional links here that they, the manufacturer supplies so you can fit it on. So there's three links there that I'm going to cut off. And uh, lucky enough for me, uh, it, once I get rid of those additional links, I'll be uh, left with two uh, internal links uh, in the perfect position just to put in uh, the joining link. So, okay, I've got my old man's chain breaker here and I believe that it was um, his father's. So there's a few generations here, so I better not break it. And this is predominantly done um, British motorcycles. Now I need to push uh, this pin and this pin to get that link off. So I start with the outside one. So just pinch on there. Once you know that's in properly, I'll just back that off. There we go. That's in. Now I can st start pushing that pin out. It's definitely pushing it out, it's moving. You can see the gap at the rear there is increasing, so I'll do a bit more and then I'll move across and do the other one. Do some longer levers. All right, I'll uh, back that off now. And push the other one, I think, and then we'll see how we're going. Beautiful. Okay, I'll bring you in closer. Look, you can see there the pin has um, gone inside that outer link there. So now I'll do the same for this one. So for now we're just going to push the other. You can see, see how it all grease, but it's definitely pushing that. Out. Oh, there we go. That is um, the extra additional chain links off, and we just need to take that off now. So just back this 1920s or 30s chain breaker off. It's good, and there we have it. You can see the, um, the squashed, squashed O-ring inside there, and... Uh, that's off now, exposing a um, two internal links. Once that chain is pulled nice and tight, and there we have it. I'll be able to feed that through there now and join the chain up. So I, I just had to move the, the rear wheel in a fraction just to give it a bit of slack, just so I could line up the two um, holes for the pin to go in. So I've got the, uh, I've got the master link here. It comes in from behind. Now before putting this in, you've got to make sure that you've, you put your O-rings on the inside, so they'll go in from behind there. And then I'll get two more O-rings on. Push that on. Then we get the other external part of the master link. Push that on. Now we've got to squeeze that in pretty tight. I've got some moldy grips here to see how tight I push that in. So just enough so you can get the master link clip on. Now the master link clip uh, goes in one direction from the manufacturer's recommendation and it faces um, 
or the open part of the clip faces backwards when it's on the top. Okay, and I assume that's because uh, if it's facing forward, um, you know, a rock or a stick may uh, get in there and knock it off and therefore you could lose your, your master link out and your chain flies off. So, so after some pushing and shoving, we've put that master link through and exposed, and you can't, it's a bit out of focus there. Expose the grooves on this side to get the master link clip on. So now, get the master link clip on, it's going the right direction. So just get it on one, and then I hopefully I can squeeze this down. And that's it. That is the link in, the master link's in, the clip's on. Job number two being the chain is on. Uh, happy days, it seems to be fitting and working okay. I'll still play with the tension once I get it off the jack and I can sit on it uh, and therefore get a, a true indication of how tight the chain should be. So I've still got to put a, the front sprocket cover on and a couple of little things here, but that won't, won't take long. And then I can warm her up, get it off the jack, and then we can drop the old dirty oil out. So we'll move on to the next job. That's the bike warmed up. Now we're ready to get this oil out. I've got the container at the bottom to catch it, 30 mil socket, we'll undo the drain plug now. So the bolt to the rear is our oil drain plug. I believe that one's our uh, oil screen. So the first thing we've got to take out is the drain plug. There we go. Hopefully, got to get all the oil. Too bad. It's pretty black. It's done. Oh, what has it done? Five thousand k? No, a bit less. Maybe four thousand k. This, this oil. So we'll let that drain, and we'll uh, have a quick inspection of the uh, magnetic uh, oil plug. Whilst we're draining the last of the oil from the oil plug, the bottom of the sump, we'll uh, get this oil filter out. KDM six nineties have two oil filters, one on each side. One's a large and uh, the other one's a bit shorter. I don't have a, uh, a circlet pie to grab that, so just a little puncher in there. Pull her out. I think this one's the large. The large one's on the left. Let's sit that on there to drain. And uh, we'll let that drain a bit longer and then we'll give it all clean out. We'll get the one on the other side out. This is the other oil filter, which is on the right side of the bike. Two uh, eight mil bolts holding this in. This um, oil filter is the shorter one of the two. Just got to get that out. There we have it. There's the rotor in here. So we'll just give that an inspection, make sure it's all looking good. I'll just put that back in. So, so not only does the bike have the two oil filters, it also has two oil screens, one on the other side beside the drain plug and the one at the front of the bike will face in the front here. So, we'll... Oh, that was, uh, that was nice and tight. Don't know why that was so tight. So we'll take that one out. You can see it's just another level of protection for your engine, hoping that any impurities or anything inside the engines caught up in these. And now taking out the uh, other oil screen on the left hand side of the bike. So you get a little bit more oil out. So to get those last few drops out of the bike, I get it off the center stand, I give it a shake, and then I uh, lead it back over again, 
and you get a bit more oil out. So you don't really have to do this if you don't want to, but I try and I try and get as much as I can out. And you can see when you lean it over, you definitely get another decent pour. So whilst that's uh, draining the last few drops, I've uh, got an errand to run now and I've got to leave it. So one thing I do like to do uh, when I drop the oil out of a bike is uh, remove the key out so no one can start it. And also I um, put a little sign up there, no oil, in case, um, you know, I, I forget or someone else walks back into the garage and uh, finds the key and then wants to start the bike up. Well, I'm back. It is a few days later now and I finally managed to get a bit more time uh, to put the oil back in the bike. So what have I done? In the meantime, well, I have cleaned up all the parts uh, used for this job, being these uh, oil screens, the uh, oil screen plugs, the uh, main drain plug and the magnet, and um, I've inspected the O-rings and that uh, copper washer to make sure they're in good nick. I've got the 10W60 oil here. This is a uh, German liquid molly that I've been recommended. Got it for a fair price. So I'm gonna give this one a go. It's four off-road bikes. We'll see how that runs for this trip. A couple of oil filters. I will preload these with oil before putting them in the bike. Um, and that's it. Oh, I've got the torque setting. And the torque settings are for the main uh, oil drain plug. It is 20 Newton meters on that bad boy. The oil screens, these are 15 Newton meters. And as the little six mil bolts for the oil filters are six Newton meters. So, all right, let's uh, preload and get everything ready and we'll put them in the bike. Now, um, show you what I do. I just preload these, and it's simply um, just getting the oil that you're going to use, and I just load them up into the oil filter. That's all, and uh, it will then just slowly go through and filter out through that oil filter there, and you'll see it slowly getting wet. So, we'll do that, and then I'll pour in the 1.7. This one you've got to be careful because it will go through, so I tilt it over any which way. Any of the oil that goes over the top, I'll use anyway, so just, just loading the oil filler up. That's all I'm doing. Giving it a head start, I guess. So that's that. So the first oil filter is the larger one of the two. It can only go in one way because it's got to push onto a little, uh, a little mounting kind of bracket on the inside, making sure that O-ring is in good condition. You can't get these oil filters mixed up because one's smaller than the other. Um, so if you try and put the large one in on the other side, it's not going to fit, so you can give it a go, but it won't work. <laughs> now, I don't have a torque wrench. That will get down to six Newton meters, unfortunately. So this one is going to be six Newton meters, I'm guessing. over and do the other side. So the oil filter on this side again it is a um, symmetrical oil filter it doesn't matter which way it goes in as long as it goes over that spigot at the end. I've given this a nice clean out and um, 
give the uh, O-ring a bit more oil on there and it simply goes inside. Again, six newton meters. I'll just do it so it's tight. Only six mil bolts, you don't have to pull down on like Hercules. Whilst I was putting that oil filter in, you would have probably observed the oil filler plug just here. And also down the bottom here, our sight gauge to see uh, the level of oil. So uh, I have my funnel here. I've been making sure that is spotless, nice and clean. And we'll uh, get that off. Again, we'll give that a clean. Right, so I have my measuring jug here. Uh, the 690 needs 1.7 litres of oil to be topped up to its manufacturer's recommendation. I have my mark there. 1.7 mark. I'll only go to a litre. Put that in and then I'll put 700 in. Good. Now, I'm just gonna get that, slowly get the oil in. So this is just one litre so far. Okay, that's a litre. And we'll go another 700 mil. And there we have it, 1.7 litres. All the filters have been preloaded, so we don't have to worry about them. Fill a plug back in, oil fill plug. Some tight, I'll give everything a wipe down and we'll see if there's any leaks. So there we have it, that's the oil change job done. All we have to do now is kick it over. I've had an inspection of the sight gauge on the side to make sure there is oil in there and you'll see that. So it's a matter of now removing this, because there is oil in the bike, and kicking it over. Come on. So there you have it. That is all three jobs done for this video in regards to the bike maintenance. We have a nice clean air filter at the top, a brand new chain in there, and I've put some fresh oil into the engine. I'm happy with that, how that went. I still need to put some oil in the air filter skin on that, and the bash plate down here, and a couple other little bits and pieces, but pretty much the bike is ready to go on its desert adventure. I still want to get one more video out before I leave on this, and that is being the gear I'm going to take being bike gear, camping gear, food, and camera gear. Um, so there, that's all the stuff that's gonna go on the bike and come with me on the trip. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I can get that done in the next uh, few days, time permitting. Uh, however, that's the end of this video. That's the end of this bike maintenance series. So I appreciate your time. Thanks heaps for watching. Um, and uh, ride safe and I'll see you on the trails.